So this is Hanch Island, and uh, it's a granite island. It supports a seabird colony of thick-billed murres, black leg kittiwakes, and those seabirds attract predators like glaucous gulls and ravens and arctic foxes. We come to the colonies to count them, and what we do is we zodiac below the cliffs and we take photographs of the cliffs, and then we hire graduate students to count every bird on the cliff. All these birds are being fueled by the ocean. So all the explanation of why these birds are here and their long-term survival is entirely linked to, the, to ocean productivity and their ability to access prey in the sea. It's pretty spectacular. The cliff is covered in birds. Clearly, it's very hard to get here, so this isn't something that people get to do that often. So it feels very, I feel very fortunate to get to see this. One of the things that seems to be appearing with climate change is sea ice is going out earlier, especially in Hudson Strait in this part of the Arctic. And so the bears are coming on land earlier, up to three to four weeks earlier. And this means that they've lost four weeks of prime hunting on seals and then they, they're attracted to the seabird colonies because of the prey that is here, and they're eating the eggs in adult murres. The reproductive success of these seabirds is being destroyed by bears now in ways that it wasn't before. As all of these changes are only happening within a 20 to 30 year time period, which is just a very short period of time to have such dramatic ecological change happening. The seabirds are kind of a way to also link the ocean and the things that are going on in the sea and the coasts of Canada um, to the terrestrial environments where the birds are nesting. These birds are carrying contaminants that come from as far away as the agricultural fields of Indonesia. And glaucous gulls are carrying contaminants from a paint factory in the Great Lakes. And now increasingly uh, floating plastics are being found in the seabirds. So kids, children's toys and bottle caps and band-aids and things that don't uh, break down that are floating on the sea surface. A lot of seabirds are attracted to that and they ingest them and then they can't digest them. So that's another thing that seabirds are telling us is that the oceans are of course connected. Uh, issues that are occurring down south affect them here. And even a place as remote as this isn't free from those interactions with southern uh, North America and other places. It's important to consider that what we do has a potential impact on the marine environment and Arctic wildlife in Canada. And so I think what this expedition is demonstrating is that there is a commitment to change, recognizing the, the challenges ahead and discussing and thinking and researching ways in which to improve our way forward. One of the great things about a place like this, and you only feel it when you're truly in a wilderness area, is how much awe and wonder you feel. <laughs> and that's something we, we don't get a lot of in modern society. Places like this where you're, you're, you're humbled, you know, and it really touches you in the heart, not just in the mind.